last week we were able to talk much about quality health care under advanced clinical health care management. We are able to talk much on quality health care. We made mention of the aims of health care. We made mention of the aims of effectiveness and safety targeted through some uh, through some processes. We also made mention of ways by which we can measure the quality of health care. We did mention, we did discuss also on quality improvements and their total quality management. We did talk about clinical practice improvements and process improvements. And we talk about health catalyst. I remember I defined the word catalyst. And I also defined health catalyst in health care management. So I also gave some examples, clinical examples of quality improvements in health care. And I think that was the last thing we discussed or we learned about last week. So before we go into process variation, which is the second, which is the second chapter in that book, I think we need to still go into some areas under quality improvements. There are some things we still need to know under quality improvements. Like I've told us from the definition last week, that quality improvements is defined as systematic data guided activities designed to bring about immediate improvements in healthcare delivery in particular settings. And I said it has been used as a means to develop clinical practices and is based on the principle that there is an opportunity for improvement in every processes and on every occasion. I also made mention that it is used interchangeably with total quality management. I remember I told us about quality improvement strategy, that it is, it is an approach. It is an approach. So and I think I defined it as any intervention aimed at reducing quality gap for a group of patient representative of those encountered in routine practices. So this morning, I think we will start with differentiating between quality improvement strategy and research. Quality improvement strategy and research. I repeat, quality improvement strategy and research. We want to see the difference between the two. If I were you, I will make it a tabular, a tabular form so as to be easy for you. Make it a tabular form so that it will be easy for you for, the, for you to differentiate. Quality improvement strategy applies research in practice. It applies research in practice. Why research develops new intervention? Quality improvement strategy applies research into practice. Why research 
develops new intervention. That is one way of differentiating them. Number two, quality improvement strategy poses no risk to participants. You cannot find any risk in any of the participants when it comes to quality improvement strategy. But in research, participants are faced with risk. Quality improvement strategy poses no risk to participants. Why research could pose risk to participants? That is number two. Number three, in quality improvement strategy, the primary audience is the organization and the information from analysis. Information from analysis. Why in research? Research is general to all similar organizations. I repeat, the primary audience in quality improvement strategy is the organization and information from analysis. Why research is general to all similar organizations? In quality improvement strategy, data is specific to organization, while in research, data are derived from multiple organizations. In quality improvement strategy, data is specific to organizations, while in, that, in, in research, data are, are derived from multiple organizations. The last point here is under quality improvement strategy, that program on its own adopts new strategies that appear to be effective. It adopts new strategies that appear to be effective. Why that of research? Attempt to assess and address problems. Quality improvement strategy adopts new strategies that appear to be effective. Why that of research attempt to assess and address problems? Okay. So, uh, there is something we call six sigma. Six sigma. Six as in S I S. Sigma. S I G. M A, six sigma. What do we mean by six sigma? Six sigma is designed as a business strategy. It is designed as a business strategy and it involves improving, designing, and monitoring process to minimize or eliminate waste. Six Sigma is designed as a business strategy. It involves improving, designing, and monitoring processes to minimize or eliminate waste. Okay? Which means if you are asked to explain the word six sigma, that's the explanation. So it is designed as a business strategy. It is a, it, it is a design for business strategies. Now we have 
some primary methods that are used with this business strategy. I mean with this six sigma. We have two primary methods that are used with six sigma. Number one, one method inspects process outcome and counts on the defects. One method inspects process outcome and counts on the defects. Number two, the second method uses estimates of process variation to predict process performance. I repeat the two. There are two primary methods used or applied with six sigma. One of these methods is spread process outcome and count on the defects. Number two, the second method uses estimates of process variation to predict process performance. Now, there are five phases of processes used by a component of six sigma. There are some five phases of process used by a component of six sigma. What are these five phases processes? I mean, five phased processes. Number one, we want to talk about definition at least you have to define your process. Number two, you have to measure your process. Number three, you have to analyze it. Number four, you have to improve on it. Why number five, you have to control it. I made mention of the five phase process used by a component of six sigma. Number one, define. Number two, measure. Number three, analyzed. Number four, improve. Number five, you have to control. Okay. There's something we refer to as root cause analysis. Root cause analysis. Root as the normal root of a tree. R double O T. Root cause analysis. You can also call it foundational cost analysis. But I would rather prefer root cause analysis. I will never ask you for the other name given to it. I am only using that to make it easier for you to understand root cause analysis. What is the meaning of this? Root cause analysis is a technique used to identify trends. It is a technique used to identify trends and assess risk that can be used whenever human error is suspected. Whenever you suspect any human error, you use this technique to identify your trends and assess your risk. So it is a technique used to identify trends and assess risk that can be used whenever human error is suspected. Before we go into chapter two, which is a process variation, let me quickly give us an understanding of what we mean by benchmarking. Benchmarking in healthcare. Benchmarking in healthcare. You may not find some of these things in the material. So that is why you need to really listen to this lecture. 
very well. Like the comparisons I've just made about quality improvement strategy and research, you may not easily get it in the material. Okay? So you have to listen carefully to get these points I'm giving you now. What do we mean by benchmarking in healthcare? It is defined as the continuous and collaborative discipline of measuring and comparing the results of key work processes with those of best performances in evaluating performance. I want to repeat, it is defined as the continuous and collaborative discipline of measuring and comparing the results of key work processes with those of the best performances in evaluating performance. Okay. I can, I can even say benchmarking is a way of measuring and comparing results with those of best performance in evaluating performances. We use it in evaluation to compare best practices. Now we have two types of benchmarking used in evaluation of patient safety and quality performance. Two types of benchmarking used in evaluating patient safety and quality performance. I want you to also listen very well to this. You may not easily find it in the material. What are these two types of benchmarking? One, we have internal benchmarking. Internal benchmarking. What do we use this for? It is used to identify best practices within an organization and to compare current practice over time. You want to use it to identify best practices within an organization and to compare current practices over time. That is number one type of benchmarking used in evaluation. Number two, there is something we call competitive or external benchmarking. Competitive or external benchmarking. This involves using comparative data. This involves using comparative data between organizations to judge performance. I want you to understand this very well. Benchmarking generally, you need to understand it as healthcare managers. I remember there was a time I was asking a student. I mean, there was a question I asked in an exam concerning benchmarking. And somebody said, it's a way of marking benches in school. <laughs> I will not expect this from a 400 level student. So I made mention of what benchmarking means. And I made mention of two methods used in evaluation, which happens to be two types of benchmarking. I did mention about the internal one and the external one. So let us go quickly into chapter two, which is which has to do with process variation. Process variation. In this course, we have just three chapters. Process performance process variation 
and value creation. So this second chapter has to do with variation, process variation. What do we, pro, anything called process is a major step. Process is a major step to doing things. It's a way of doing things, a major way of doing things. Okay? So process variation is a way of observing values. Making sure that all values are the same. Okay? Making sure that the values are the same. Process variation. All manufacturing and measuring processes exhibit variation. For example, when we take sample data on the output of a process, such as critical dimensions, we observe all the values. We observe that all the values are the same. I will get to a point I will need to stop so that I will give room for question because I think we are having just 18 minutes to go. So there is something we call spread. There is something we call spread of variability. Spread of variability. What do we mean by this? It's a collection of observed values distributed about, say, about some location value. It's a collection of observed values distributed about some location value. That is what we call spread of variability. Okay. Like for example, we use standard deviation to have an insight into the spread of the data through the use of what is known as empirical rule. Don't, don't bother yourself about the word empirical rule. Don't bother yourself with that. I'm only explaining. We have different classes of variation. Number one, we have controlled variation. We have uncontrolled variation. We have Yes, control variation and uncontrolled variation. There are two types of variation that I want to make that I make mention now of now. And I want to define it. Control variation is characterized by a stable and consistent pattern pattern of variation over time. Control variation is characterized by a stable, let me just use the word stable so that you will not be confused. Control variation is characterized by a stable and consistent pattern of variation over time. This type of variation 
will be random in nature and will be exhibited by a uniform fluctuation about a constant level. This type of variation will be random in nature and will be exhibited by a uniform fluctuation about a constant level. That is control variation. Uncontrolled variation is characterized by a pattern of variation, by a pattern of variation that changes over time. It is characterized by a pattern of variation that changes over time. And so it is unpredictable. You cannot predict an uncontrolled variation. It is unpredictable. And this type of variation will typically contain some structure. This type of variation will typically contain some structures. So this concept of controlled stroke on controlled variation is important in determining if a process is stable or not. It is important in determining if a process is stable or not. Now, what do we mean by stable process and unstable process? I will, I will explain this and I will round up for today. And we continue next week. Stable process is deemed stable. A process is deemed stable if it runs in a consistent and predictable manner. You can say there is a stable process if it runs, if the process is run, I mean, if the process runs in a consistent and predictable manner. Unstable process. In this type of process, there is no consistency and it is unpredictable. So which means stable process goes with control variation while unstable process goes with uncontrolled variation. I want you to get it that way. Stable process goes with controlled variation while unstable process goes with uncontrolled I mean, variation. Uh, let me see if we can quickly rush this. Let me quickly rush this, then we round up. What are the sources of variation that we have? Sources of variation that we have. We have statistics. And you know statistics is a branch of mathematics that has to do with analysis, collection, interpretation, and everything. So statistics generally is a source of variation. So it is the accumulated variations from all sources. That is statistics. Accumulation, accumulated variation from all sources. Then we have lots to lots. How do you spell this? Lot to lot. L O T. Lot to lot variations. Lot to lot variations is the difference that occur from one batch of material or processing to the next. Just that. Just know it like that. Lot to lot variations is the difference that occur from one batch of material or processing to the next. The second one, stream to stream. Stream to stream. Stream as in S-T-R-E-A-M. Stream to stream variation. 
This is the difference that occurs from one process stream to the next process stream. Then the third one, time to time. Time to time variation. This one reflects the difference between, I mean, it reflects the difference over time. It reflects the difference over time. This is within or between locks or within or between streams. It can fall in between any of those two. Then the last type of variation here is piece to piece. Piece as in P-I-E-C-E. -E. Piece to piece, P-I-E-C-E. -E. Captures the variation across the products. It captures the variation across the products. It captures the variation across the products. I think I am going to stop here because we are having less than 10 minutes to go. So let's stop here and give room for questions. Question time. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Colonel, please unmute yourself to answer the question. Mr. Colonel, please unmute yourself. Yes. Yes. Am I okay now? Uh, okay, good morning. Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning. My Go name ahead. is Ben. My name, my name is Ben Darabon from Ikorodu Center. Okay. Please throw a little a light on variation. I did not get it right. I did not get it very clear on variation, sir. I started under variation as, you know, we are talking about process variation. Yes, and I yes, made mention of process. Anything called process is a major step to doing things. Okay? okay. And yes, I said variation is uh, a way of observing that all values are the same. Variation okay. is a way of of oh, this man is answering my question. Let's go on your own. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. Mr. Abo. <laughs> I can Mr. hear you well. Mr. Hello? Akolo, me Hello, I right, can Mr. hear you, Akolo, sir. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. I'm unmute yourself. Can you hear me now? Yes, sir. I can hear you now. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, yes, yes, yes. I've just made mention of process. Yes, when sir. When you hear process anywhere, okay? Process is a major step to doing things. Do you get it? Yes, sir. You get that? Okay, and I yes, say variation. Variation is a way of observing that all values are the same. That is variation. Yes. Then, way of observing values distributed about some location value is called spread of variability. Yes, sir. Do you understand it that way now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Please, I still you need your help. You me when I'm talking about classes of variation. Yes, I listen to you. Okay. All right. The little, I need the little, your sister, sir. Please, can I have the process variation on the screen, a little, sir, so that I can have the notes? Because before I screenshot uh, it, it has closed. You may not really get it there. You want to know about the sources, Abby? Yes, and the, yes, I want to know the sources. If it can be on the screen, then it can help me a lot so that I can go through it. Let me just help you out straight away. Okay. I make mention of lot to lot. You may not get okay. it easily for the handout. Okay. That's why I want you to really listen to me very well. I'm giving you a shortcut to most of these yes. things so that it will be easy for you. I have lot to lot. So I have lot to lot. Then yes, I have stream to stream. To stream. Yes. Then yes, time and to time. time to time. Then yes. Piece price to, to price variation. Piece to piece variation. Piece yes. P I E C E. Piece yes, to sir. Piece variation. Piece variation. Yes, sir. Four. Okay. Yes. And then you understand me very well. You can you can yes, understand sir. the definitions, the explanation. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So I want to advise that whatever you are hearing from me directly, just be, yes. just capture it and okay. pay less attention to your handout. Because okay. I am making things easy for you so that even without reading the handout, if you listen you very well to me, you can easily get whatever I'm saying. Yes, sir. Okay? Thank you so much. Yes. All right. Good Thank morning, so sir. Any other questions? Good morning, sir. Good morning. Sir, this is the one that Vivian from Ecology Center. Okay. I'm um, sorry. You, right. you mentioned um, six, six, and uh, sigma as yes. uh, a way of uh, eliminating or minimizing waste in a business. Yes. Can we relate this six sigma as um, um, lean? Because okay. lean is also used in uh, eliminating waste, sir, in business. Don't know. I can't get you very well. I said, sir, six. that you said, um, according to your definition, you said yes. six sigma is yes. used in minimizing or eliminating waste in business strategy. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Can I know the, the six uh, sigma or is it just a term? A term? Is it term? Okay, sir. Okay. Okay. It's a tag. Six okay. sigma. It's a tag. And I made mention of two primary methods that can be used with yes. the six sigma. I said one process out inspect process outcome, and the second one estimates process variation to predict process performance. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Okay. Yes, sir. Any other question? Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. All right. Any other question? Questions? We, we still have one minute to go. One minute to go. <laughs> Okay, assignment. Assignment. Yes. I want you to differentiate between benchmarking and six sigma. Differentiate between benchmarking and sigma. Differentiate between benchmarking and six sigma. Differentiate between benchmarking and six sigma. That is the assignment. Okay. Okay, sir. All right. Have a nice day, sir. Thank you so much.
See you next week. All right. Thank you. Bye. Okay, sir. Okay. I try All right. to get you. Eh? It's your leg.